Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. In this video, I'm going to go over centripetal acceleration and the uh, tangential velocity equation. All right, let's get started. So to start off, I want to go over this idea of tangential velocity. Now, sometimes you might see it as, uh, especially when we're talking about rotating objects, uh, linear velocity. Okay. Um, that's because, so the reason why there's multiple names for it is tangential velocity really describes what's happening. So if we have an object uh, that is rotating around in a circle, okay, so we have an object rotating around in a circle, uh, the tangential velocity, um, the word tangent means that it's, uh, the, the vector is touching just one point, and so if it's moving in a, let's say, a counterclockwise fashion, right, so it's rotating like this, around the circle, the velocity at that point is tangent to the circle. So this will be my v sub t. Um, or if the object was here, okay, the tangential velocity would look like this. All right, so I'm just drawing it throughout the circle to show you what the tangent means. It's just touching that one part of that circle. It's not wrapping around the circle. That's more of a rotational velocity. And so the word linear velocity also holds true with this idea of tangential velocity. I'm going to get rid of these arrows here. Okay, so with tangential velocity, it means that at that moment, how fast is it moving? What is the velocity at that moment? Um, because when this object is rotating around a circle, let's say it starts here um, at, I don't know, was that like 12 o'clock-ish? And then it goes to here, was that like 9 o'clock-ish? It moves from this angle to this angle. Right, so it changes, it goes around this circumference. And how fast it changes this theta, this delta theta, um, in, in the amount of time, this is what we call the angular velocity. So I just wanna clarify that. The angular velocity is um, how fast or how quickly or how slow the, uh, the theta changes, okay? Versus tangential velocity, it's how fast the object is moving at that moment. Okay, and so let's say to to imagine this, if we were to have a string, right? So this is a ball, and we have a string. Okay, so we have a ball, and we have a string, and this ball and the string is spinning around and around and around. And at that moment, when the ball is right here, the string snaps. What the tangential velocity tells us is how fast this ball will move in a straight line. So that's where the linear velocity comes into play. Okay, um, And the reason why it moves in a straight line is because the string's no longer there to hold back the ball. And so the ball will just shoot straight out, pew, right, in a straight line. Line. So that's a big distinction between angular velocity and tangential velocity. Tangential velocity is how fast it's moving around the circle um, versus angular velocity, which tells us uh, how fast the, I guess, the circle is being made or how fast the rotation is. So I'll put that there. It's um, how fast it is rotating versus tangential velocity is just how fast it's moving at that moment, okay? Um, yeah, so that's a, a big distinction um, into the, the difference between angular velocity and tangential velocity. Just to give you one more uh, analogy in how to approach these two values, um, because I find that a lot of students get these two values, like they get them mixed up, okay? So let's say we have a track. All right, so we have a track, um, just like a high school track, right, 400 meters. Okay, so we have a track, and you start here on the track, and you go around the track in, let's say, I don't know, 30 seconds. All right, so your time is 30 seconds, and so you go around the track, and that means your delta theta is 2 pi radian. Okay, so your angular velocity would be the change in the, the angle, so in this case, one full rotation in a specific amount of time. So 2 pi radian divided by 30 seconds. Okay, and so whatever that turns out to be. Um, so that would be pi over 15 radians per second. Now, 
we got to use our imagination a little bit. So if we see this circle, right, and then we get we get a like a pair of scissors and we cut that circle, okay, and we flatten out this circle, we would get a straight line. And this straight line, in comparison with that circle, this straight line is the circumference. And so when you are running around the track, what you see as you're going around the track is your tangential velocity. And because we flattened out the track and you're no longer moving around in a circle, right, there's no uh, omega, we can imagine that you're just running in a 400 meter straight track because the, the circumference for a, a one loop, one track is 400, right? And so we could just imagine that you're just moving straight in a straight line along this track. Okay, so once again, I'll try that again. We have a track and we just like snip the track and we flatten it out, right? We, we take this uh, circular track, we flatten it out. And so because you're no longer uh, doing a change in rotations, okay, you're no longer seeing how fast you can rotate from one position to another. We're just looking at the flat line. So we're just seeing exactly how fast you're moving on this track. And that's where tangential velocity comes into play. Okay, so I wanted to start off with that distinction because the equation for tangential velocity actually utilizes angular velocity. So if we were to take a look at the tangential velocity equation, we have v sub t is equal to omega times r. So omega, of course, it's the rotational velocity, okay, or the angular velocity, and r being the, the radius or the distance from the from the center and that gives us the tangential velocity okay or the linear velocity so we do have um, the equation where the the variables are both represented um, so with this equation we can come up with a couple of relationships okay so first off um, we got to think about it right if if tangential velocity is how fast you're moving at a specific moment in time along the circle okay and omega or is how fast the rotations are actually happening it would make sense that if the object is physically moving faster it would rotate around the circle at a quicker rate and according to this equation that holds true so what we're looking at is the relationship between tangential velocity and omega so let's say we're using the track right you're running on the track and you're running super fast right you you're, you have a very high tangential velocity that means that you will complete one lap around the track at a quicker rate so you are your angular velocity also increases okay and the inverse is true too so let's say you're you know you're, you're exhausted you're exhausted, you ran way too fast, so you're tangential, you're, you're barely jogging, you might as well be crawling. Okay, your tangential velocity is very low, so you're gonna complete that one lap at a slower pace. Your angular velocity goes down. So now let's take a look at this r, this radius. Okay, now what we can see is that if one variable is on one side of the equal sign and the other variable is on the opposite side, we get a relationship called a directly proportional relationship. So what that means is if back to the track analogy, okay, uh, if you are running on a track and you're like on the outside of the track or like if you have a, like a highway, a rotating highway, and you're on the, the far edge of the track, okay, so your radius increases. If your radius increases, you need to be moving faster going around the the circle in order to uh, rotate the in a circle in the same amount of time so what I mean by that is we're going to use a track analogy again uh, let's say we have a track and you are able to go uh, one loop okay you're, you're able to do one rotation in let's say I don't know let's say uh, 30 seconds okay all right, and so that will be your angular velocity. So we have uh, two pi radian divided by 30 seconds, all right? So that is your omega. Now we take this, we take this uh, loop and we increase the radius. So we make the loop bigger. But you want to be able to complete this loop in the same amount of or you want it, you want to have the same amount of, um, of velocity this angular velocity so you want to complete one loop in the same amount of, of time and so what that means is you will have to so if this is my velocity 
okay, so that's my velocity. You need to run around this loop, run around this track with a greater velocity. You need to be able to run around this loop with a greater velocity in order to complete it in like the same amount of time. Okay, and this is also true for something that is smaller, right? If you have a small, small loop and you want to complete it in around the same amount of time, okay, because the loop is so small, you, you don't have to run around the loop as fast in order to complete it in 30 seconds, right? So this whole idea is like this, this idea of a ratio. So if your radius of your circle increases, you need to have a greater tangential velocity if and only if you want your angular velocity to remain constant. And the inverse runs true. Uh, if you are running around a circle that is smaller in radius, you don't have to run as fast tangential velocity in order to keep the same amount of uh, angular velocity. Okay, um, and the last relationship I want to go into is the uh, omega and the radius. Okay, omega and the radius. Now, omega and the radius in the equation, because they're on the same side of the equal sign, they will always have a inverse effect. All right, so we're taking a look at these two variables through the scope of uh, tangential velocity. So you're running at the same pace, right? You're running at the same pace. Um, and you're running around at the same pace around the circle. You're running around the same pace around the circle, um, and you, you complete that. So that's good. So we take that, but we we increase the radius, right? We increase the radius. We make the radius bigger. So what this means is that you are running around basically a bigger circumference, but you kept your pace the same. You kept your pace the same. Um, and so what that means is that if your radius increases, but you kept your pace the same, you will complete that one rotation at a slower rate. It's the opposite effect. And also the opposite holds true, right? If you have a small radius, right, if your radius goes down and you're and you're running around the same pace, okay, you're running around the same pace, you're able to complete that one rotation at a faster rate. Okay, so your omega increases. All right? So that is uh, tangential velocity with linear velocity. And the important thing here is the equation and the different relationships that come comes from it. Now, the next one I want to show you is this idea of centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. Now, the cool things about centripetal acceleration really comes from the centripetal force. So keep an eye out on that video. It's a really nifty uh, phenomena happen with our with our world with centripetal force. But centripetal acceleration, what that shows us is if we have an object that is rotating around in a circle, remember back to our original definition um, of acceleration, we said that acceleration is either a speed up or a slowdown or a change in in direction, right? So if we have a change in direction, that should be a D, change in direction. If you change your direction, that means we are accelerating. And so if you are moving around in a circle, technically you're changing your direction constantly. Yeah, it's not like I'm changing my direction from left to right, but like what I'm facing is, is changing. And we call that the centripetal acceleration. So a couple things I want to point out. First, here are the rules. You need to remember this. All right. So these are these are red, red, red signs. Okay, so these are very important. Centripetal acceleration. Centripetal means center oh boy center seeking meaning that the arrow or the vector always points towards the middle of the circle okay so i'll show you if we have this object and this object has a tangential velocity like so okay the centripetal acceleration will always point towards the middle of the circle like so now, this is new because we usually say that the acceleration needs to be along the same axis as the velocity. For example, if we had a object moving to the right, the velocity to the right, and the acceleration was to the right, that means that the object was um, speeding up, right? Or if you had a object that is moving to the left, but the acceleration was to the right, that means it was slowing down, right? We always said that the velocity and the acceleration vectors, they need to be along the same axis. But here we have something new. The acceleration and the velocity, they are not along the same axis. In fact, it makes a, for our class at least, a beautiful 90 degree axis.
okay? It's perpendicular to each other. Um, but the centripetal acceleration always points towards the middle, and this will come up when we come up with our net force equation, okay? Um, it, and it just shows us how this tangential velocity is changing. So what that means is right here, we see that the tangential velocity is pointing to the left, but like moments later, here, okay, here, and here, it's it's uh, the velocity, we see that the velocity is pointing towards different directions, okay, as we go around the circle. And this change in the direction um, is described as the centripetal acceleration. Okay, I'm just showing you how I'm drawing the centripetal acceleration at different parts that you might see. So the most common ones are the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and the 9 o'clock ones. Um, so that's the tangential velocity, and sometimes like somewhere between, uh, especially if the problem is a little bit more tricky, but usually you'll see it at the, oh boy, that needs to be vertical, the 12 o'clock, the 3 o'clock, the 6 o'clock, and the 9 o'clock, okay? So it's always pointing towards the middle, okay? Very important, probably the most important idea here. Um, the other important idea is, of course, the equation. The equation for centripetal acceleration. So let's take a look over here. So the equation for centripetal acceleration, this center seeking acceleration, is the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Okay? And if we take a look here, uh, we see that the acceleration, the center uh, centripetal acceleration and the tangential velocity, okay, it has what we call a square relationship. A square relationship. So what that means is if the tangential velocity increases by a factor of uh, of like 2, right? So instead of vt squared, it's like 2vt squared, okay? The acceleration will increase by a factor of 4, right? Because 2 squared is 4. Or if our tangential velocity increases by a factor of 3, okay? 2 or 3 squared gives us 9. So this will be like this. Okay, so uh, it has a square relationship. And let me tell you what, on the exams, this one is a favorite. The square relationship, it's a favorite. Um, if we compare that to the one over R, okay, this is what we call a inverse, a inversely proportional uh, relationship. So what that shows us is that if the radius increases, um, that means the centripetal acceleration will, will decrease. Okay. Um, or the, the vice versa. If we have a decrease in radius, that means the centripetal acceleration will increase. Um, yeah. And when we get into the, the forces, this becomes a little bit more apparent. So uh, this is a really cool relationship as well. But I can't wait to talk about centripetal force with you. Uh, but until then, this has been a lesson on tangential velocity and centripetal acceleration. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.